Welcome to another class on Media Ethics. Today's topic is truth-telling. I am your professor, Rachel Khan of the UP Journalism Department. Truth-telling has been valued since ancient times. In the Code of Hammurabi, written in stone in 2500 BC, we read, He who lies will be put to death. Later on, in 33 AD, the Judea Christian ethic has pronounced that thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Of course, this comes from the stone tablets from the time of Moses. And today, oath-taking in judicial courts demand an oath. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? What is truth-telling? The Oxford Dictionary says the communication of information that one believes to be true. Truth is different from truth-telling. According to Aristotle, truth is the agreement of the mind with reality, while truth-telling is the agreement of the mind with what is uttered or written or produced. To illustrate, let's say Amanda went out riding her bike. Now someone asked me, where is Amanda? And I did not know that she had gone out riding her bike. I thought that she was in her room. So I say, she's in her room reading. So I am telling the truth because that is what I thought. But I am not in possession of the truth because Amanda is out of the house. A journalist may be truthful in reporting a story, but the truth of the story is dependent on the truthfulness of his or her source. A documentary filmmaker has more control over the truth of the narrative, but is also dependent on truthful research. What is the importance of truth-telling? How is it possible to make a good decision on false information? We need truthful information in order to make correct decisions. A commitment to truth demonstrates a respect for persons as equals rather than tools to be manipulated. A person lies when he wants to get something from another person that the other person might not do if he knew the truth. Obviously, truthfulness is in communication builds trust. It's also pretty obvious that we need truthful information in order to have a running democracy. Otherwise, a dictator can easily manipulate us. Media has the power to promote truth, but it can also promote lies. For example, media from print to film to websites can make people believe that this was the way events actually happened through the cracks here's a look at some especially persistent false historical facts that kids are still being taught in schools einstein failed math for decades teachers and parents have tried to inspire kids who don't quite excel in school with a fun historical fact even einstein failed math as a kid as a message of encouragement to late bloomers, it's great. As history, though, it gets an F. In 1984, a Princeton University team led by Dr. John Stachel discovered that Einstein was actually a kid genius who had conquered college-level physics by age 11 and was fluent in Latin and Greek. The reason people thought he had failed math was simply due to people misunderstanding the grading scale on his report card. Way to go, Einstein! So was Einstein actually bad at any subjects? Just French. French is hard. The U.S. declared independence on July 4th. Fireworks, flag cakes, and barbecues. Your 4th of July activities to celebrate American independence from Mother England are a lie. The Second Continental Congress convened in Philadelphia on July 1st, 1776, and the next day, July 2nd, not July 4th, representatives from the 13 colonies overwhelmingly approved a motion to declare independence. It took them two days to agree on the wording of the Declaration of Independence, however, so it wasn't until the 4th that they ratified it. Since that date was at the top of the document, it's the one that stuck in everyone's minds. But the whole process took a long time. Members of Congress didn't actually begin signing the Declaration until August 2nd, and King George III didn't get wind of it until October. These days, of course, you could do the whole thing instantly with a simple Facebook post. 
Columbus had to prove the world was round. While few still think Christopher Columbus actually discovered America, many believe the explorer's voyage was important because it proved the world was round. But this was not the case. In fact, people knew the Earth was round as far back as ancient Greece. In the 19th century, however, writers like Washington Irving used the Columbus story to take pot shots at the Catholic Church, claiming the explorer had to convince superstitious clergymen that the Earth wasn't flat like they thought. The idea caught on with the general public, just another testament to the power of fake news. Truth is easily manipulated in movies. Just how many movies claim to be based on a true story? Filmmakers have been adapting historical events and true stories since basically the beginning of cinema. In that time, movies have had varying degrees of historical accuracy, and in this video I'd like to look at what ethical concerns that may raise. Some people may disagree with the idea that this is even a concern. They say it's just a fictional movie after all, and that people should know films aren't always a good representation of the truth. But unfortunately, the reality is that people often don't know or care about how inaccurate movies can be and just assume what they see on film is true to history. If events are portrayed a certain way in popular media, it seeps into the collective consciousness regardless of the truth. This can be especially dangerous with regards to people who are still alive or issues that still have significant reverberations today. A common argument against this viewpoint is that concessions have to be made for the sake of the plot, and I certainly understand where people are coming from, especially in regards to big budget Hollywood films. The studios are spending tons of money and don't want to take risks in terms of narrative. However, there are a few reasons why I don't find this argument 100% convincing. To me, if the true story isn't interesting enough on its own and needs massive embellishments, maybe it just shouldn't be made into a film. And of course, many of the people these films are about did live fascinating lives, they just don't necessarily fit into a tidy three-act structure. But that's where the artistry of filmmaking comes in. They can still make it compelling with dialogue, performances, cinematography, and all the other stylistic elements of cinema. If the filmmakers really just feel they can't make a good film out of the real story, they could just change the names of the people involved, and that would solve the issue, at least in my opinion. For instance, the novel and the movie Primary Colors are clearly about the presidency of Bill Clinton, but with names and details altered. I think this communicates clearly to the audience that things are just loosely based on reality. But it seems as if filmmakers want to use famous real-world figures and events as a crutch. A movie about a fictional monarch isn't as easily sold to audiences as something about, say, Queen Elizabeth. And, to be clear, I'm mainly just talking about things that completely contradict reality. Obviously, with most historical topics, we don't know many of the exact details or specific quotes that were said, and admittedly, filmmakers have to fill in the blanks to a certain extent. But altering major things is a much bigger deal. A great example of the dangers of factual imprecision is controversial director Oliver Stone's 1991 film JFK. Throughout the film, he takes liberties that consistently make the case for conspiracy regarding Kennedy's assassination seem like it's backed up by more evidence than it really is. For starters, Joe Pesci's character is shown admitting that he was part of a CIA plot to kill JFK, but the real person Pesci was portraying maintained he was unaware of any conspiracy and didn't even know Lee Harvey Oswald. There are already tons of interesting things about JFK's assassination, you don't need to make stuff up to make the story compelling. This did result in a huge controversy and the film was pretty much pilloried by the press. Obviously, JFK conspiracy theories were already widespread, but this film definitely helped keep them alive in popular culture. And Stone's movie has even been credited with causing Congress to release documents related to JFK's murder. So regardless of your opinion on whether or not the theories are true, clearly films like these can have an effect on society's perception of reality. In 2015, a film was released about the life of mathematician Alan Turing called Imitation Game. In it, Turing covers up the existence of a spy in order to keep his homosexuality a secret. This is completely made up to add drama and is basically slandering a war hero. Turing has been dead since the 1950s, but I can't imagine his living relatives were too happy about this. On top of that, the filmmakers created tension that wasn't there between Turing and his superior Alastair Deniston in order to give the movie a villain. 
This led his family to publicly state that they were deeply offended. A situation like this could have easily been avoided by simply changing Deniston's name, and I can't really come up with a good excuse as to why the filmmakers didn't do this. Historical accuracy led to a controversy about Best Picture winner Green Book. It features pianist Don Shirley, whose brother called the film a symphony of lies. I do think there are a small number of clear exceptions. Take, for example, the 2012 film Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, which is about exactly what you'd imagine hearing the title. Any reasonable person watching such a film should be fully aware they aren't seeing a realistic depiction of history. The entire premise is a what-if situation. Furthermore, I think there's an exception to be made for movies that are set in a historical situation like World War II, but with completely fictional characters. There were millions of people involved with the war, and we can never know all of their stories. And this doesn't affect the reputations of real people. Something like Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards is a good example, which makes clear with his ending that it's portraying an alternate history. It makes no claim of being based on a true story, and while it does feature real figures like Hitler and Churchill in minor parts, the main characters are all fictional. It should go without saying, but it's not that I dislike all movies that alter history. I thought The Favorite was one of the best films of 2018, and many things were different than in the life of the real Queen Anne. But I often hear people suggest that filmmakers have no responsibility whatsoever to adhere to the facts, and to me, this is going way too far in the other direction. That'll be it for this. What do fake histories, false information, or post-truths have in common? These are all forms of a lie. What is a lie? Apart from it being the opposite of truth, a lie is giving some information that one knows is false with the intent of deceiving others. Lying is a form of deception, but not all forms of deceptions are lies. Why is that? Not all deceptions are verbal. For example, a journalist who disguises herself as a doctor in order to go undercover in a government hospital. Or a man who just nods when you ask him if he likes your dress and he doesn't really like it. A lie has three essential features. A, a lie communicates some information. B, the liar intends to deceive or mislead and see the liar believes that what they are saying is not true. Lies can cause harm to both the receiver of the information and the liar. The people lied to are deprived of some control over their future because one, they can no longer make an informed choice about the issue concerned, two, they are not fully informed about their possible courses of action, and three, they may make a decision that they would not otherwise have made. The audience may suffer damages as a result of the misinformation coming from mass media or social media, such as increased anxiety, buying the wrong stocks, panic and paranoia, and worse, making erroneous decisions that can harm themselves. The person who intentionally released false information will also suffer the consequences of his actions. One, he has to remember the lies he stole. Two, he must act in conformity with those lies. Three, he may have to tell more lies to avoid being found out. Four, he has to be wary of those he lied to. And fifth, his long-term credibility is at risk. Lying is possible with speech, with the written word, and also with pictures, as Calvin well knows. Finally, the ethics of truth-telling can be visualized via the so-called truth scale. That is, the ethical act is dependent on the level of expectation of the media audience. For example, 
no one expects truth in a fantasy film, but they certainly expect truthful information in a news report.